Welcome to the finale of High Guardian Spice. We made it! And after that last atrocity, you might be wondering if there's anything more I can say or there's any way that the final episode could top it. And I'm gonna be upfront, episode 12 is not as bad an episode as episode 11. It's not a good episode, in any sense of the word, but it's not that bad. Although I will say, it does present us with an entirely new set of problems. Episode 12 is the climax, Attack on Titan. I mean, Attack on High Garden Academy. This is the episode where we are truly introduced to our villain. Yes, episode 12, the very last one. We get introduced to Mandrake. He's been hired to finish off the girls after all of his failure that one time. If you can say anything about Mandrake, it's... You're so soft. No wonder they almost killed you. You've seen this guy before. His personality is the most generic fantasy assassin that you can imagine. I'm gonna kill you and I'm gonna take pleasure in doing it because everyone else is stupid and I'm so edgy. I thought I asked for poison. Uh, if there is any twist, he has the ability to shapeshift into anyone that he wants. And that's a cool idea. It can actually recontextualize the series if your main villain could have been anyone at any time throughout the whole thing. After that kind of reveal, it can add a rewatch bonus. You know, when you get to that scene where a character may have been acting just a little tiny bit out of character, just a little bit suspicious. It's a good thing that he was only introduced in the last episode and the series didn't use this idea at all. It's episode 12. I shouldn't have to say this, but it does bear repeating because at this point I want to bear in the knife as much as I possibly can. You have good ideas, High Guardian Spice, and it pisses me off with how abrasively you choose not to use them. No, instead of having this guy throughout the entire series, who could have transformed into anyone, we need generic cat girl that sits in the background and that can only be a cat. Why does all of it even exist? Maybe it is best that we don't see Mandrake throughout the entire series though, because Mandrake is the biggest fucking moron that I've ever come across. All of the characters are morons, but Mandrake really takes it to the next level. I'm gonna riff for a while because there really is no other way to tackle this episode than taking it apart scene by scene. Olive claims that her plan is luring Rosemary into witch country to see her mom. Her mom's in witch country? Her mom is Lavender. Ah yes, the most competent assassin that you could afford. Doesn't even know that the target's mother is the very famous hero who is working for your boss. Throughout this entire episode, Olive is reluctant to kill the girls, which is completely out of character. She had little to no hesitation during the Halloween episode, but here she wants to do anything but kill. And while you could argue that it's because she's now afraid of the girls, one, Olive now has this big powerful assassin, and two, no, Olive is clearly on some kind of moral high horse that she doesn't have any right to be on. Killing the girls is wrong. So Mandrake disguises himself as Lavender, and he does it to question Rosemary. And you know what he wants to know? Tell me what you and your friends know about the rot. Do you know what's causing it? Uh, writers, uh, I think you've forgotten this, but the rot isn't a secret. Time is in Lygarth because all of the fairy woods is infected with the rot. That's the premise behind her character. The rot isn't some underground murder cult. Who else knows about it? Oh, Sage? Oh, she's gonna want to see you. Oh, and time and parsley! Rosemary is definitely an idiot going on and on about everyone who knows, not suspecting a goddamn thing, but like, the rot is not a secret! It's a secret to nobody! Rosemary doesn't even list all the people that she knows. The mermaids, the potions teacher, once again, everyone in the fucking fairy woods. Mandrake is about to kill Rosemary, but Rosemary mentions that Caraway knows. And then, Mandrake just leaves. Okay, so can you tell me why Mandrake didn't just go through with killing Rosemary? He doesn't need her for any more information at this point, and not killing her doesn't speed up his mission, because his mission is to kill her. Mandrake is trying to kill Rosemary, and will continue to try to kill Rosemary throughout the entire episode, but when he has her alone and unsuspecting, he, he just doesn't, because Caraway was mentioned? I reiterate, Mandrake's mission was to kill the girls. Figuring out who knows about the rot is completely secondary. Actually, no, it's not, because once again, everyone knows about the rot. Then Mandrake is looking around Caraway's room as Caraway. Mandrake doesn't lock Caraway in a room or anything, so no shit, Caraway enters and we have this, this, this fucking clone bullshit. It's mercifully brief at least. I will say, some of the magical action they have in this episode is definitely interesting. It's flashy, and the action is apparently one of the few things that the show is competent at, but... You used old and new magic together! At this point, I just don't give a fuck. I don't know what that means! New magic versus old magic does not make sense, no matter how you try to make sense of it. End of story! A solid foundation in old magic gives one the potential to merge their strengths. A solid foundation in old magic, huh? Which is why they haven't heard about this until the end of their first term. Which is why the school has been constantly going on and on about how great new magic is, and how useless old magic is. How you, Caraway, specifically said that they wouldn't be using much old magic at this school. 
They're making it up as they go. There is no other answer, because any other answer makes just as much sense as new magic. Who was that guy? A shapeshifter. No shit. A highly dangerous shapeshifter. No shit. Don't engage and don't alert the other students for their own safety. There's a murderous maniac on school grounds. Should we tell the people about this so maybe they can evacuate? Or maybe get their weapons? Nah, 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 nah that, that's a bad idea. We shouldn't do that. The students learning to fight and identify threats couldn't possibly handle this, even together. What the hell even is the school? Mandrake tries to poison the other teachers, but because Olive did a side quest where she found morality off screen, she switches it for a sleeping potion. I'm sorry, napping potion. And why? We're not supposed to draw attention! They're planning on burning down the school. Even ignoring that, episode 2 established that poisoning is just what fucking happens at High Garden Academy. Honestly, I'm guessing the authorities would be suspicious if they didn't get any poisoning victims every now and again at this point. I know that Olive is trying to find a conscience, but it's a stupid excuse. And the fact that Mandrake believes her is even more stupid. Speaking of stupid... Is this the only door that leads up to the school? Yeah, the rest lead down. Because of Parsley's adventures with the Parasex, we know that at least one of these roads leads back up to the school. B but even ignoring that, it's a fucking forge. A forge requires a chimney for the smoke to escape, i.e. a way out of the building. Granted, it's not a convenient way out of the building, but it is a way out. Attention students of High Guardian Academy, your attendance is required at the forge for a mandatory assembly. Any students who are absent will risk failing the term. That message sounds really suspicious. Should we tell the other students not to go down into what we can predict as an obvious trap? Nah, that'd be dangerous. Let's not do that. We the... can't have swearing. This is a kid's show. The girls. The girls aren't in there. H how the fuck do you know? You're not in the room. They didn't follow your orders, boss. Once again, how the fuck do you know? Anyway, Mandrake closes the door on them and lights the place on fire. Mandrake lights the Blacksmith Forge on fire. The place underground, made of stone and rock, built to be fire resistant, with several escape tunnels. Oh no, we're all doomed. We're gonna die. Beast Girl seems fine with it though. There's smoke pouring in now. We're all gonna die. What have you been learning for the whole term? Now we kill everyone. Make it look like an accident. A spell gone wrong. I know we're trying to make this look like an accident, but uh, do you think that force field over the school is going to look suspicious at all? Nah, it's not suspicious. I mean, sure, it looks like someone tried to trap everyone in the burning building, but no one will ever suspect that it isn't an accident. Help me catch this asshole! Rosemary Language. This is a kid's show. I can't imagine anyone older than seven getting this far in. My first crush! Meet by the books that start with the first letter of his dumb name! Well... A for Aster. Is it a nitpick that I think that Aster couldn't have possibly been Rosemary's first crush? Rosemary goes on and on so much about her backstory in Pebble that it's hard to imagine that the crush that we saw on screen was actually her first one. Meanwhile, Sage and Parsley are putting out the fires. Ah yes, in a world with infinite magic, water is the way to go. In a library full of paintings and books, vulnerable to water. We did it, Patrick! We saved the city! There's a million spells they could have used that would have put out the fires without risking the books. Sand spells, removing the oxygen, or barring that a spell that just snuffs out fire, no other element required. Mandrake manages to catch time, and then this happens. Mandrake, let me do it. Really? Why the change of heart? In a show full of stupid characters who've had 12 episodes to continually prove how low their IQ is, it is honestly impressive how you can prove to be the most idiotic imbecile that I've ever had the misfortune of watching on screen in the span of 30 seconds. I'd ask, how stupid are you? But the answer to that question would cause physics to break down. Like, my god, Patrick Starr is looking at you through the window snickering to himself. And Mandrake, Mandrake's not supposed to be an idiot. He's supposed to be the edgy, hyper-competent assassin doing what he needs to get the job done. I mean, fair enough, Olive's character turn is just as established as the first one, but still. And, and you know what the funniest thing about this scene is? Mandrake didn't have to say or do anything. He's got time held down, right? So he just tells Olive to get the knife out of his pants. Ah, okay. Use my knife. Why didn't Olive just take the knife of her own accord? Is this some kind of vampire influence where cat girls need permission to take something from you? Like, just have Olive pull the knife from Mandrake and then stab. Then you don't make your villain look like Mandrake. 
I mean, even then, Mantrick is once again waiting an awfully long time to not kill someone. And while these battles could have been interesting, they are very dynamic and interestingly drawn. The fact that the participants are so stupid makes everything seem just so horrendously forced. Also, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention this. Mantrake could have won this fight, but then he took an arrow to the knee. Look, the Hobbit movies couldn't make that look cool. You don't have a chance in Oblivion. Meanwhile, in the basement, the plan is to go into a hole. Okay, question. Wasn't the forge picked because... Is this the only door that leads up to the school? Yeah, the rest lead down. So, who's the fuck up here? Mandrake for not caring the down was bad, or the students for using down. There should be some kind of emotional resonance to seeing bits and pieces of High Garden Academy blown up. Seeing the school get all blasted up, it's supposed to pack an emotional punch, and it feels like High Garden Spice is trying to cash in on something it didn't earn. Because I don't give a damn about this setting. You had 10 episodes to give this academy some specific personality, and yet half of those episodes didn't even take place at the school. It's easy to forget that the setting is a character in and of itself, and when you do your job right, we should feel similarly when the library is set on fire to when Rosemary or Sage get blasted out of the sky. But because this series was so focused on nonsense, it couldn't give a proper character to the setting, beyond generic magical school where no one has a brain. Anyway, the episode ends when Mandrake blasts away because he failed to steal Pikachu. Then some firefighters come in with conventional water. This is a world of magic! You only gotta be level 5 to use the tidal wave spell. It's not as good as Fireball granted, but it's still a pretty useful one. At the very, very end, they try to set up an adventure continues. But at this point, I think that every person involved is quite aware that this adventure isn't going to continue ever again. We had some sick moves yesterday, High Guardian Spice. I don't know about Guardians or Spice, but I can believe someone somewhere is very high. Because of our names. I mentioned this in episode one, but yeah, they're not spices. They're herbs. Also, High Guardian Spice is a terrible name. It just doesn't roll off the tongue. And it's finally time to close the book on this one. So, as of now, I've made 11 videos on High Guardian Spice, a 12-episode pseudo-anime from 2021 that in 2024, almost no one seems to remember or care about. And a big question on many people's minds is, why? That's a fair question, usually. I mean, a lot of people have treated this whole series very dismissively. Like, why are you even covering this? It's old news and it's not relevant anymore. And, if I may be a little harsh, I'm guessing that you're new here. I'm old hat when it comes to reviewers. Well, sometimes I do do reviews because they're on trending topics, such as Cans Without Labels or more recently Horrid Henry. More often than not, what I review, I review it because I find the project interesting. Or at least I think I can make a good video out of it. While I can't say that no one cared about something like Wayside, I wasn't reviewing that to get the clicks. I reviewed it because it was a piece of media that I had a lot of thoughts on, and it was very personal to me. And when I get to the Dungeons & Dragons cartoon or the NeverEnding Story cartoon later this year, hopefully, they'll be in the same vein. I review what I review because of how something clicks with me, not the clicks that I get on the internet. True, I would be a lot more successful on this platform if I just talked about what was relevant all the time, every time, but if I did that, I'd get quickly burned out and lose that passion that I think makes my videos something of quality. Now, to be fair, a lot of people have asked me why High Guardian Spice out of a more genuine curiosity. So, let's talk about why High Guardian Spice. Because it's true, there are so many worse series out there that I could have given the episode by episode breakdown. High Guardian Spice is nowhere near the worst thing that I've ever seen. However, it is one that resonated with me in just about every negative way possible. Fantasy is my favorite media genre. I love the worlds inspired by Tolkien or Dungeons and & Dragons, and seeing someone butcher the genre so badly and misunderstand it this horribly did get under my skin in many different ways. Making matters worse is the series that have a lot of good ideas that either chose not to use, or chose to use horribly. A more powerful magic causing a rot that's analogous to the Industrial Revolution. That's not a bad idea, that's actually a very good idea. True, a lot of High Guardian Spice is fantasy cliché bullshit or anime cliché bullshit, Time is bow, parsley is forge. But there was something here. Honestly, until episode 11, I was more disappointed with High Guardian Spice than outright angry. Because I saw something here. Characters like Parnell or Slime Boy have gotten fan followings for a reason. Even with all this cliche bullshit that the series has, I do have to respect it for some creativity, more than a lot of other series, especially these days. For one, it's not a fucking remake. It's not an adaptation. Say what you want about High Guardian Spice, but it is its own IP. It didn't quite form its own identity, at least not in the positive sense of the word, but it manages to stand on its own. It's not the next Mulan 2020, if you understand me. Speaking of identity, that's another disappointment with High Guardian Spice. 
Fantasy is a genre that is very adaptable to themes of diversity. The traditional Tolkien quest is about peoples of all races and all places coming together for a common goal. And High Guardian Spice is a world that has transformation magic. It's really sad that they didn't explore the implications of that beyond the barest of senses. Unfortunately, the best possible interpretations of episodes like 6 and 11 are that they wanted brownie points for just showing up. But those episodes were written so badly that I actually find them socially destructive. I think that the series is legitimately harmful because of how bad it is. Let me put it this way. A lot of people thought that I was going to go into this shouting that it was all woke garbage. And why? Because a lot of people have done that. Because it's easy to do that with a series like High Guardian Spice. The show is bad. The cast shuffles from bland and annoying to irredeemable. And when you claim that this show is supposed to be representation, it just sends all of the wrong messages. If representation in media is important, it's important enough to do well. We have to do better than this.